Hi guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Deb and welcome to this community. If you are brand new here, I would love for you to join us because this is a faith-based channel that I speak about different topics um, in the Christian walk and just encouraging you and motivating you to continue on this faith journey. So if you didn't check out my last video, I, I had a video about four biblical principles that spoke about financial freedom and how we should view finances. So if you didn't check that video out, I suggest you check that one out first and then continue on to today's video because today we'll be speaking about five practical habits we can implement in our life so that we may walk toward financial freedom. Don't forget to like this video and hit subscribe if you are interested in this type of content so that I know that I can continue speaking about topics like these. So the first habit that I would suggest is tithing. Malachi 3.10 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. So tithing is basically giving back to God. It's a return. It's when you owe someone money. It's just like any any uh, credit card you have, you are the debtor and they are the lender. So when your payment is due, you give them the amount that is due to them because they have already given you a certain amount. The same thing is with God. God gives us finances for us to be managers of it, to be stewards of what he gives us. And as responsible stewards, we are commanded to tithe back to him. And he's asking for 10%. And so some of you may think, I don't have enough margin for me to give my tithes. And I'm here to remind you that you do. For me, tithing has been critical in my finances because I believe what the Lord is saying. And what he's saying is to test me in this. He wants you to test him. He wants to prove to you that he is your ultimate provider, that you will not lack anything, that he will supply all of your needs. And so for me and my personal experience, I know when I was living on my own and I, would, I had a decent job and I made it a goal to always tithe. And I, this was my number one priority. Like I have to tithe. I don't care how many bills I have. I don't care what the amounts are looking like this month. I'm going to tithe because this is a biblical principle that God wants us to practice. So I did that and on paper it didn't make sense. I didn't make enough to cover all my bills. I didn't make enough to, you know, pay for everything on my own. And guess what? I was able to do that and more because I made tithing a priority. It has to be the first thing that comes out of your check. Not after you have paid all your expenses, but before any of that, before you calculate anything, tithing should come off your paycheck first. I promise you that this works. It is a principle that God has established and he will supply all that you need. Just follow what he's telling you to do because it's ultimately for your good. Point number two is avoiding the use of debt. Proverbs 22, 7 says, The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a slave to anyone. I don't want to have to owe anything to anyone. I don't want anyone to have the power to lord over me. And so for me, what has led me to financial freedom is avoiding the use of debt. And it is not buying impulsively, not wanting everything that I see, and not just going for it. Avoiding the use of debt is critical because you want to be able to have enough margin for yourself, for the church, for the people around you. You want to manage it well because once you get into piles of debt, it'll be no good. It'll be like a chokehold to you because you won't be free 
to use your money. Instead of paying your bills uh, responsibly when you get your paycheck, right away, these people are gonna take what's in there. If you don't pay your bills or if you're behind on it, they're quick to take it. And like this verse is saying, the rich rules over the poor. It's, it's the reality, it's a harsh reality. But that is the truth. And most times we are putting ourselves in debt and sinking ourselves into this deep hole. I want to be the one able to give generously to those that are around me or to those that are in need or whoever that I may come across. I want to be able to have that opportunity. And if you're drowning in debt, there's no way that you can do that because you cannot give what you don't have. The Bible is also clear when it says, when we borrow, we must pay back. It actually classifies people that do not pay back their bills as wicked people. I just advise to stay away from debt. Have the self-control and discipline to say, hey, I don't need this $500 bag. I don't need these $1,000 shoes. As long as we are content with what we have, at the moment, we can avoid piling on debt. Point number three, spend less than you earn. I remember a time when I was in my early 20s and I probably had a minimum wage job, but I had tons of credit cards. And I don't know why I did this, but I learned from this. And so I would pile up my credit cards. I would, I would charge it up. And then when my paycheck came, I couldn't, I wasn't able to pay it. And the only reason why I charged my credit card high, I think I even maxed it out, was because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to fit in with what my friends were wearing. I wanted to be able to hang out on the weekends. And I was drowning in debt. Or I even, when I was in bad relationships, I would go above and beyond and I would spend tons of money just because I thought that this would keep them and it hurt me it hurt my credit it hurt my my finances and so my advice to you is to spend less than what you earn it is tempting and I'm not saying that it's easy but it is tempting to want things because we see them on ads we see them on Instagram we see them on social media we see all of these things being pushed to us so that we can just God consume. wants us to practice the fruit of self-control. And he doesn't want us to fear because he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And in other versions of that scripture, sound mind is self-control. And so you may think, I don't have the capability to control myself or I always feel the urge to consume and buy more things. I just want to remind you and encourage you that if you have the Holy Spirit of God living in you, you already have self-control. You just need to access that self-control and believe that you have it. Once you have that belief in your heart, your actions will demonstrate what you believe. So, Believe today that you have self-control and that you can live according to your means and you can live below what you earn because why? You have the Spirit of God living in you. Don't ever underestimate the power of God in your life, power that you carry. Don't believe the lie that you have to live in fear because there is no financial security. Don't believe the lie that the economy, that the government is in control of your finances. And God sees, God knows, God is watching. God is personal. He isn't out to destroy you. God is sovereign. God is a loving father who wants to see his children blessed. And therefore, he's given us these principles he gets to learn from so that we can live financially free. The Christian walk isn't just about our emotions, but we walk in faith and the benefits of following God is that we have peace in our hearts. The world isn't controlling our lives, isn't controlling our emotions, but God, the Prince of Peace, lives in us. And what better way to live than to have a peaceful life, to have a peaceful mind, to be joyful, 
to be joyful knowing that God has saved you and he has redeemed you from the wages of sin that is death. So if we broaden our perspective, if we get to see the bigger picture that we can believe in God, that we can walk in faith knowing that God has our back, knowing that God is our provider. Point number four, financial margin. Plan for financial margin. And a great way to do this is by setting up a budget budgeting is just another way of managing your finances having it written down or through an app or make an excel sheet any way that reminds you that you have to stick within these boundary lines assigning every dollar to something will guarantee that you're not just spending money mindlessly Another practical habit is if you're a coffee person like me, I love, love, love coffee. And so the temptation every day is to go to Starbucks and grab some coffee. And listen, coffee is not cheap. It's really expensive. So if you're buying coffee for six or seven bucks a cup, set a margin for yourself. Put aside a weekly amount that you're able to access just for coffee. I'm not saying to eliminate everything that you love and everything that you enjoy. Once you set a weekly amount and you've already run out of that, let's say $20 a week for your coffee, once that $20 runs out, that's it. You've enjoyed all the coffee. You've treated yourself and now it's time to make the coffee at home. So just little things like that, writing down your expenses and being able to see with your eyes, okay, I have this amount due, I have to pay this, I have to pay this. It organizes your mind so that you're not frantic every time you get a paycheck. You're not wondering, am I gonna have enough? Because you're planning for that financial margin. And there's so many resources that you can use. There's Dave Ramsey. He has great advice on how to get rid of debt, how to save for an emergency fund, which is great. Also, there's also budget plans like the 10-10-80 budget plan, which is paying the first 10% to God, which we discuss is the tithing. Pay the second 10% to yourself. And this is living expenses, establishing an account for other known expenses, and then pay everything else from the 80%. This is your bills, this is your rent, your mortgage, your car payments, your insurance payments, your healthcare payments. So if you give 10%, you save 10%, and you live out of the 80% that you have left, it allows room for you to live at peace. It allows room for you to to be covered in all areas of your expenses. And number five is give generously. Be a person of generosity. The Bible says in Hebrews 3.15, therefore by him, which is Jesus, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and share For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Friend, you are blessed to be a blessing. Giving breaks that attachment that we have to money, that fear that we want to hoard our money, that we want to save our money and just keep it and lock it up. But God is telling us to be generous, to give. Proverbs 11, 24 to 25 says, One man gives freely yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Friends, that goes back to the two commandments that Jesus left us with, which is love God with all our hearts, souls, and minds, and love our neighbor as ourself. When we pour into other people, when we give generously to other people, we will be filled, we will be refreshed. First by God, because God sees your work, God sees your generosity, and that does not go unnoticed. But also, keeping the benefit of seeing the joy of someone else, of helping someone through a difficult circumstance, 
What a great gift we have. Because God so generously gave to us, we are called to give generously to others. And this will expand your life. It will not shrink it. Living in greed, living in envy, that will shrink your life. It will shrink your quality of life. You won't have peace. You won't be content with what you have. So friends, if we keep in mind these five biblical habits, you can walk yourself to financial freedom and you can honor God with your finances and live a blessed life. We often have this wrong thought that giving means me having less. Giving means someone taking away from me. But it, the Bible actually shows that it is the opposite. When we, when we give, we are richer. When we give, we are fulfilled. When we give cheerfully, God will bless that. So instead of having this flawed perspective that giving will only take away from my blessing, friends, I want to encourage you that it will only increase your blessing all. So friends, thank you so much for joining me in this video today. I hope this helped you in any way. And let me know in the comments how you manage your finances. What ways have worked for you in order for you to walk toward financial freedom? I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.